Hey everybody, welcome back to Ravenstead. It's time for another build. This time we're going to build a burial mound or cairn, maybe with a Stonehenge on it or something like that, some trees, kind of carry in that woodland theme that we had on the last build, the uh, Canyon Overwatch. We got those trees figured out, so I want to just be able to make sure that these pieces all tie in together on the gaming table. So why don't you watch over my shoulder and let's get something built. All right, let's get into it. For this build, I do use a craft knife throughout. I don't cut myself, so don't worry about that. I needed some cobblestones for this build, or flagstones. So I took some square and rectangular pieces of foam, trimmed the edges, and then made little slices there. So here I've got the base glued up and just making these slicing cuts to get the shape that I want. So this tomb or cairn um, will have some rocky elements to it, but I also wanted it to kind of transition into that forested look that we got in our last build. I wanted a little path, kind of a sunken path going into this little hill. So I'm just tracing that out, and then I'll get to work with the craft knife, slicing all that stuff out of there. Make sure that this thing doesn't end up looking like just a square piece of foam. So it's a lot of carving. A lot of static electricity on this one. Man, this stuff was really sticking to me. It's pretty annoying. I've got the blade on that craft knife extended out pretty far so I can get these long slicing cuts. Once everything's all trimmed up, I'm going to add in a little bit of texture with some balled up aluminum foil and then a brass brush. I like to use the brass brush. The bristles are a little softer than the steel, so they make a little finer uh, stone look to it. Let's build up our entrance. I envision this, you know, having a couple of big stones set around this cave that was excavated out, maybe for uh, some dead king or queen or shaman. It's buried in this little hill. glue in these flagstones for the path I'm using hot glue here uh, just so I can move along with the build I do get those annoying little strings all over there but I can pick those off later with a pair of tweezers I cut in a second level to that path just to add a little bit more uh, depth and interest I'm just cobbling those in with those little pieces go. I looked at a lot of reference images for ancient burial grounds, tombs, um, what the Celts called cairns. So they were usually uh, dug out of a hillside lined with stone and then the entrance was either left open as like a, a mausoleum or closed in like a tomb. Cairns also served as markers. Uh, stacks of stones were also referred to as cairns. Not to be confused with cairns, which is something totally different. Here we're going to go ahead and black bomb this thing with a mixture of Mod Podge and black paint. I like to use the matte Mod Podge, so once it dries out it's not quite so glossy. We'll get a good coating on everything, and that helps to lock everything down. The hot glue does a pretty good job with it, but it's good at filling voids too. Now we've got to make some trees for this build. We've got some preserved lichen. And the sticks are from uh, mountain laurel. It grows around here. And I just trim off uh, some of the dead sticks to get the shape that I want. Liberal coating of hot glue there and then just squeeze this on. Uh, it's necessary you have to fuss with it for at least 10 seconds. Just kidding. So we'll go ahead and leaf out this tree. Now lichen has kind of a viney look to it, so we're gonna we're gonna attach some flocking. So off camera, go outside and I uh, spray these down with some polyurethane spray varnish, and then sprinkle this flocking right on here. 
You can use any type of spray adhesive or varnish. I just like the polyurethane. It's clean, easy. You see the difference in the trees there. So we'll get this second one done. And then we'll uh, we'll move on to dry brushing the piece. So here I've got a uh, a blender brush I picked up from the dollar store. These are great for dry brushing. And I'm using a little dolphin gray, a little light colored craft paint, just to hit all the highlights on this piece. And I wanted to scrub in a little bit of green undertone on the areas that are uh, that are going to be flocked with the grass. Here I'm highlighting over with an even brighter color. This is a parchment. It's like uh, off-white. Really high contrast. Oh, that's so much fun. That's so pleasing. Brush felt really cool going across those rocks. Uh, green looks weird now, but it, it kind of plays later. And I'm going to go over this with a few different washes. This one is a uh, acrylic ink. It's burnt umber and water. It's mixed about 50-50, uh, I guess. Pretty thin. Give it a good coating. All over the stone areas. I like to have it pool up in some areas. So as it dries, the values are a little higher. This is some Vallejo Rust Wash. I've watered this down quite a bit as well. That'll give us some good uh, color contrast on the stone. And then my favorite green wash, the lime green, super watered down. Wherever I think there might be mold or um, lichen or something growing on here, I'm going to get that all coated in. It really uh, disappears next to nothing when it dries out, but it gives you that nice undertone. So cool. And I'm going to paint in some watered-down PVA glue, sprinkle on the flocking. This will give us our grassy, mossy areas. Just tuck that in a little bit, tap it off. There we go. And this is some very watered-down PVA glue and water. And I'm putting on some coarse turf here. And then I'll soak it through. Once it dries, you, you can't even tell because uh, the glue dries clear. I just wanted some thicker, rougher areas. You can go over that coarse turf with a little bit of the fine flocking, and that kind of helps tie it all in. What a mess. Oh, boy. All right. Let's tuck in some bushes here. I'm using a couple different colors of preserved lichen. And then I'll also use some uh, coarse flocking or turf. Putting this one in with uh, PVA glue instead of the hot glue. I didn't want it to uh, set up before I had a chance to get all my bushes in there. And here uh, I'm kind of hiding mistakes. Sometimes the uh, hot glue squeezes out and it gives you this weird little place. But. Uh, you can hide a lot of happy mistakes here with uh, with the flocking. Let's get a good spot for our tree. I'm just gonna punch a hole in that with a nail. Now I'll fill it up with hot glue and then stick that tree in. And I'll have a few seconds here to kind of twist it and turn it and move it, get it into the place where I want it. I like to pick the piece up too and get different uh, perspectives. Sometimes you want to move that tree a little bit. Just kind of blending in the base of the tree with a little flocking. And here just kind of seeing where this is going to work. Thinking probably that back corner here. Yeah. Another hole. And we'll stick that one in. And watch here. I'll just I'll give this just a little turn and it kind of just made it work. A couple more shrubs there at the base. Get you all tucked in there. Nice. Go. I needed one more little bush. I needed something growing out of the entrance. Uh, it was just a little too stark of a black uh, doorway there. So a little piece of bright lichen, something 
growing out of there. There we go. All right, let me spin this thing around and uh, give you a closer look. There it is, the hillside cairn. Thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. Make sure you subscribe. Uh, leave me a comment, too. I've been really enjoying reading the comments and talking with you guys, getting good ideas back and forth. It's been really fun. I really appreciate it. I forgot the rotten plank in this build, but sorry, we'll catch it next time. And the giant tree. Oh, terrible video. Sorry. Did you see that squirrel? Uh, some kind of a tomb where our skeletons can hang out and adventurers could go in and find treasure or maybe a mysterious curse. Mm -hmm.